16 term congressman, Democratic congressman Elliot Engel was caught admitting that he actually doesn't care too much about the civil unrest. Now, this was in a video where he was caught uh, making these statements on a hot mic. He was speaking to um, the uh, president of the Bronx Bureau, uh, Borough, I should say. His name is Ruben Diaz Jr. And he was asking to be able to address the constituents during this gathering. And then listen closely to what he he says about how he really feels about addressing the civil unrest. Then I got to go down the list, and it's just too many folks here. I, I didn't have a primary when you here. Say that again? I didn't have a primary when you here. You know, this not, don't do that to me. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. So Engel says very clearly there, and he repeats himself, if I didn't have a primary, I wouldn't care. In fact, he hasn't spent much time in the uh, borough he represents. He spends most of his time um, in uh, Maryland, and uh, he was asked about that recently by a reporter, and he was like, well, you know, I'm there, I'm there, you know, but he hasn't been there. Engel hasn't been in his district since at least the end of March, and that's according to his own communications director, Bryant Daniels. And uh, his primary challenger, a progressive who we're very supportive of, uh, Jamal Bowman, uh, tweeted in response to this, and he said, this is so incredibly painful to watch, Elliot Engel. It hurts. We need to be taking care of our communities right now, whether it's election season or not. It's clear that we need new leadership in New York's 16th district. Cenk. Okay, two, two uh, huge parts of this story. First of all, uh, about Elliot Engel. This is what happens with incumbents. Uh, they get so comfortable in their office that unless you have a primary, they don't care. They're not going back there. The guy who did the story for the Atlantic was actually Edward Isaac Doverite. Uh, in getting him to write uh, a piece that's critical of the establishment, it's a minor miracle. He, he's the one that uh, goes off on progressives at the drop of a hat. And so to get him to go, wow, that incumbent's really not doing his job, that's a You really have to work hard to get to that point. And so, and to give Dobre credit, he went through and he said, look, he just has not been in the district at all since coronavirus. And, and you could read this story for yourself and get all the details. And then they said, well, you know, none of the uh, chairs of the committees are, are going uh, back home because they got important work. He's like, no, there's actually only been two votes. And, uh, and again, giving Dobre credit here, not a thing I'm fond of doing, but he did do a good story on this and we're fair. Uh, he tracked all of the other congressmen, including the chairs of committees from that region, and they had all gone, gone back except Elliot Engel. And, and Elliot Engel would say absurd things like, I was there. And then, and then Dobre would ask him, well, were you there physically? And he'd say, no. <laughs> it's just absurd. Uh, I, was, I was there in spirit. That's not a thing. Uh, and look, he's 73 years old. But by the way, the, a lot of the other committee chairs and congresspeople are also in that age group, okay? So, but to me, the more important part of the story is unless you challenge them in primaries, they're not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to say, hey, I, I get Elliot Engel's defense is going to be, hey, I was looking for the photo op. I, I wanted to speak at the lectern. And normally I wouldn't ask to necessarily speak and try to get in front of the cameras, but I have to because of my political career and we have a primary. But Elliot, you also wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for the primary. You wouldn't, and even with the primary, you didn't show up until a reporter showed up at your door and said, hey, have you ever gone to your district? And so then you had to rush back, try to jump in front of the cameras belatedly. Otherwise, you think they're not going to let a U.S. congressman speak at that, and he's going to ask two, three times? No way. If he'd done it the proper way, they would have put him up on a pedestal, right? So he's obviously scrambling and only because a progressive has challenged them. Now look, even when progressives win, uh, I'm sorry, even when progressives lose in primaries, they push that congressperson, even if it's for a brief period of time, to the left. Adam Smith, who's a huge war hawk in the Democratic Party in the state of Washington, all of a sudden became a, a peacenik when, uh, when a, a justice Democrat ran against him in the primary. Now, unfortunately, after the primary was over and he, uh, or the general election was over and he won, he went back to his old policies. But that gives you a sense of how corrupt the establishment is. 
And most importantly, when they win, they make all the difference, like AOC and Rashida Tlaib and Elhan Omar, Ayanna Parsley, you guys know the story. Uh, before we do anything else, I want to give you Jamal's uh, website because it's so important to support him. He's got him on the ropes. BowmanForCongress.com. Donate. He does, he's a just Democrat. He does not take any corporate PAC money. He needs you. He needs you. He also uh, needs volunteers uh, and anything you can do to help. That's his information right there. BowmanForCongress.com. We'll have the links down uh, below. But look, Jamal's got him on the run, uh, not just because of this. But there was another progressive in the race, and he dropped out and said, yeah, I'm supporting Jamal Bowman. I endorse him. Mm -hmm. He's going to win, mm -hmm. okay? And then uh, there was a poll a couple of months ago, and, and he did way better against Engel than anyone thought, and that's what sent Engel into his first round of panic. So Jamal's got him on the rope, and Jamal's from the community, and he built a school in the community, and that school's won awards. He's, he's exactly what a representative should be. And Elliot Engel, meanwhile, is like desperate for a camera. Oh, I wouldn't do anything if it wasn't for a primary, but I'm here trying to pretend I represent the people. That's who these incumbents are. Yeah, exactly. And, and you also have to think about like the power structure that continues to support politicians like Elliot Engel, who clearly doesn't care about his own constituents at all. I mean, we're dealing with this pandemic, we're dealing with civil unrest, and he didn't feel the need to visit his own district and connect with his own constituents until it threatened his own political career, right? So you think we're the only ones who knew what he, know what he's about? The establishment also knows what he's about, but they want to maintain the power structure that they have in place right now. Elliot Engel is the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, which is why Democratic leadership will defend him and support him and endorse him as much as humanly possible, even though it's clear that he has no interest in representing his own constituents. That seniority to them, that power is much more important than doing the right thing. And look, the thing that I don't understand, like psychologically, is you're 73 years old, and you're doing a job that you clearly do not care about, and that negatively impacts the very community that you're supposed to represent. You're 73, call it a day, right? Make way for, for some real leadership in that district. Allow a, a, a politician to come in who actually wants to represent these people. And luckily we do have a politician um, who's willing to do that and it's Jamal Bowman. So um, he is doing well in the polls. I'm really excited about that. This type of behavior from you know Elliot Engel, I think just further confirms and reinforces what you always say, Jenk, the reason why they're so vicious against you when you call for primarying Democrats is because these Democrats always show who they really are. Like they get caught all the time and they wanna, you know, they don't wanna deal with that criticism. They don't wanna deal with any type of challenges once they reveal who they really are. Yeah, and look, uh, now it's up on the, it's up to the press because e e you and I know this now, everybody watching uh, knows this now, but not everybody watches us obviously. And so, uh, and in that district, local press is super important. Uh, this is a huge gotcha moment. I mean, New York Times, after Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez won, wrung their hands like, oh, how did we miss it? We had uh, had 36 segments on AOC before her primary win. New York Times had done one quasi-story about it, right? Not even about the race, but that uh, Crowley had not shown up for a debate. So they, they were like, oh, my God, how do we miss it? So, hey, New York Times, don't miss it. It's right here. And that's the thing. If Jamal wins... The New York Times afterwards was like, oh, my God, we missed it again. Golly gee, I wonder how that happened. It's because you always support the powerful. But I love giving credit where credit is due. New York One is the one that caught him on the hot mic. Great credit to them. Uh, and, and Atlantic, a wonderful piece, actually challenging Elliot Engel and his absence in the district. So uh, I, I wish I could give that credit more often to the mainstream media. But from here on out, that is a – I get – that, hey, in the middle of the unrest, in the middle of the protests, in the middle of coronavirus, maybe they're not going to cover it in California and, and San Antonio. But if you're in the New York press, this is a giant story. A huge Democrat might go down again in the state of New York. And it's for the same thing that Crowley did, indifference to his district. And Anna, finally, to answer your question, why is Engel even bothered doing it? Part of the reason is 
of course, a huge part of the reason is they, they get addicted to power, right? And they can't let it go, and they hold on for dear life. But the other part of the reason is him and Bowman have real differences. So Engel has largely been a hawk within the Democratic Party in his career. So, hey, you know what? Uh, he agitated against Iran for a long time. And guess what happened? As soon as Jamal started challenging him in the primary, he's like, well, I, you know what? Maybe Iran is not as big as a, a threat. I, I'm not sure that, that Trump should have uh, bombed the, the, the general. Before, he was totally warmongering on Iran. And guess what? If he wins the primary, he's going to go right back to warmongering. And what's going to happen is the Republicans will turn around and go, even Elliot Engel thinks we have to do something about Iran and we have to do it right now. So they stay around so they can drive these old agendas, which are deeply unprogressive and, and don't even belong in the Democratic Party. And, and, and sorry, actually, one more point about the hypocrisy of the Democratic Party. They claim when just Democrats and other progressive groups run primary challenges, some of the time it's against uh, uh, incumbents who are minorities, right? And then they'll go, oh, my God, can you believe that a, 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 somebody who's part of the Congressional Black Caucus is being challenged? They don't point out that the challenger is also black, right? Remember the Morgan Harper race as an example, right? In this case, though, you have a white incumbent and an African-American challenger, and all of a sudden the Democratic leadership doesn't have anything to say about race. No. Hey, oh, yeah, George Floyd, yeah, et cetera. And oh, my God, protect the power of the incumbents. Oh, we got an amazing African-American leader in the community running. Nope, hate him, can't stand him. Make sure he loses. Go incumbents. That's what Democratic Party leadership's like. No, it, when we talk about revolution, this is it. When you win in primaries and you get wonderful fighters, if you thought AOC's a great fighter, she is, wait till you get a lot of Jamal Bowman. You're going to love him in Congress. Let's go do this. And, and even, look, outside of politics, because most of you don't live in that district, this is how you change the Democratic Party. And it needs to be changed because incumbents like Engel have blocked change for decade after decade. That's right. Engel, not an angel. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member-only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.